In this video, I'll cover the two ellipse tools in CorelDRAW, Ellipse and Three-Point Ellipse. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Ellipse tool can be found on the toolbox and can also be activated by the F7 key on a PC or the E key on the Mac. The property bar displays the default outline width and line style for all graphic elements, which can be changed for an ellipse once it's created. An ellipse is created by clicking and dragging from one corner to the opposite corner of the ellipse's bounding rectangle. If I want to draw an ellipse from its center, I can hold the Shift key while dragging the mouse. Holding Control or Command on the Mac makes the ellipse a circle, and I can hold both keys to draw a circle from its center. Once created, the ellipse has eight sizing handles all around and an X at its center. Corner handles can be dragged to resize while maintaining the aspect ratio, and side handles can stretch or narrow. Clicking and dragging the X moves the ellipse, and keeping the Shift key pressed constrains the move to be horizontal or vertical. When I click on the X, the sizing handles become rotation handles, which can be used to rotate or skew the ellipse. The ellipse center is now a circular pivot point, which I can click and drag to a different spot, and now this point is the center of rotation. Clicking the pivot point brings back the X and the sizing handles. As long as an ellipse's handles are displayed, I can change outline width, line style, left click a color swatch to add a solid fill, and right click a color swatch to set the outline color. I can also use the object position fields in the property bar to place the ellipse. By default, the X and Y coordinates here define the location of the X at the ellipse center. But I can also choose a different reference point, like the top left corner of the ellipse bounding rectangle, and specify that point's coordinates. When I use the object size fields to specify width and height, the reference point remains in place while other points move accordingly. The same applies for the scale factor fields, which reflect the change from the ellipse's original dimensions. If I change either percentage, the reference point stays in place. I can also enter a rotation angle. If I want to make changes to an ellipse that isn't selected, I need to first select it. I can select any ellipse while the ellipse tool is active, or I can press the spacebar to temporarily activate the pick tool, which I can use to select the ellipse. The property bar features three ellipse drawing options, and ellipse is active by default. Switching to Pi produces an ellipse with a pie slice removed whose start and end angles can be changed. If the part that remains isn't the part I want, I can click Change Direction. An arc is similar to a pie, but is an open curve with no fill. Setting start and end angles and changing direction works the same way. The Properties Docker, or Properties Inspector on the Mac, can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Properties. When an ellipse, or pie, or arc is selected, this docker provides the full set of ellipse options beyond those on the property bar. I can change Outline Properties, and for an arc, I can also add arrowheads. For an ellipse, or pie, I can change Fill Properties, or add Transparency, and the Ellipse tab has the Pi, Arc, and Angle options. A selected ellipse can also be modified with the Shape tool, whose icon is just below the Pick tool. For an ellipse, one node appears. When I click and drag this node, with my cursor outside the ellipse, I'll create an arc, and now there are two nodes. When dragging a node and the cursor is inside the ellipse, a Pi is the result. Double-clicking the ellipse icon opens the Options window to the Ellipse tab. This is where I can set the default start and end angles and direction for ellipses, pies, and arcs. If I change the ellipse angles to zero and create a new ellipse and activate the Shape tool, its node is at angle zero. If I set new pi start and end angles and draw a new pi, those new angles are used. To create a rotated ellipse, the three-point ellipse tool can be found by clicking on the small arrow in the lower right corner of the ellipse tool icon, which opens the ellipse group flyout. There are two steps in creating a three-point ellipse. 
First, I'll drag to set the baseline or ellipse width. Keeping Shift press constrains the baseline to specific angles, and without Shift, I can drag to any second point. Moving the cursor sets the ellipse height. With Shift pressed, the ellipse is centered around the first point I clicked when setting the baseline, and with Control or Command pressed, the ellipse will be a circle. With both keys pressed, the ellipse is a circle that is centered around the start point of the baseline. As with any ellipse, all properties can be changed, and Pi and Arc options are available here as well. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on ellipse tools in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.